What's going on, friends? It seems like every engine that Harley Davidson has come up with after the Evo has really been a regression in the quality of the engine build. But are they really that bad? Have we really gone backwards as far as quality control and just overall build quality within Harley Davidson engines since the Evo? Yes, there's been a lot of changes made, but Harley Davidson swears up and down it's for the better and it's just as good as it used to be. But is that really true? Are the new engines really better than the older engines? Now it's no doubt after the days of the shovel head, Harley Davidson had to do something. The shovel head really was kind of a, really an epic disaster in a lot of ways. With the cast iron cylinders, the taking the lead out of the fuel, there was a lot of reliability issues there. Not just to mention the castings were bad on a lot of shovel head engines, which basically means they used the sand castings and they were porous. So eventually they would absorb oil and the oil would just basically seep through the castings themselves and there was really nothing you could do about it. Now Harley-Davidson really begged for redemption on the Evolution engine. They went through the Evo engine, made everything aluminum. Harley-Davidson made some very large strides on the Evolution engine to make this thing reliable. They were basically begging the public's forgiveness to come back to Harley-Davidson after the issues they had with the shovel head. Now there was some turmoil within the company on the shovel head, a lot of unhappy workers, so there was some sabotage in there. And basically Harley-Davidson pretty much had to get back on track one way or another when they bought the company back. And basically the Evolution engine, even to this day, is still regarded as one of the best right out of the factory engines Harley-Davidson has ever produced. Please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, ever since the Evolution engine, Harley-Davidson began to make changes. Now, even on the Evolution engine, they did take some cost-cutting measures by going from a Torrington bearing to an INA inner cam bearing. Now, this wasn't the best move ever, but it was definitely done in the essence of cost savings. But since then, it really seems like we've seen a decline in Harley-Davidson engine build quality. Is there an issue with every new Harley-Davidson engine? Absolutely not. Do failures occur? Yes. Are there some known problems? Yes. But are they really that major that should keep you from looking at a newer engine? Now, after the Evolution engine, Harley-Davidson did away with the Timken bottom end. And they did this for several reasons. Bottom line was, it really came down to cost savings. And Harley-Davidson did a lot of testing with going with the complete roller bearing bottom end. And Harley-Davidson honestly believed that these bearings were actually just as strong, just as tough as the Timken bottom end. And supposedly, the roller bearing bottom end could take up to 130 foot-pounds of torque. Now, honestly, I don't know if I believe that, and I highly doubt you believe that as well. Now, Harley-Davidson does offer some fixes and changes for this if you really want to get deep down into your motor, and we're going to take a look at those a little bit later in the video. Now, one other major change that Harley-Davidson went to was they got away from that five-piece crank design that was held together by some very flat nuts, and when they bolted this thing all together, they actually trued these up at the factory. And they set them up with the Timken bearing. They had to set the backlash on the Timken bearing. Now, all of this added a lot of time and effort into the assembly process. It took a lot longer to get that crankshaft all bolted together and then set up correctly, get it balanced, and then put it into the engine with the Timken bearing set up and actually set the backlash in it. But once it was set, you easily had a 100,000 mile motor. Now, it cost the company a lot of money to do this. That extra time and effort that it took, while it was well worth it to the consumer, it wasn't exactly cost effective for the company. Harley-Davidson's solution to this, starting in 2003 on the twin cam engines, was to actually go to a press fit crank, an interference fit. Now, these things are pressed together at something like 40,000 PSI. Now, Harley-Davidson kind of figured out where they needed to press them, how they needed to press them together, and they just kind of had a, uh, an assumed fit of where they needed to balance these crankshafts. Was it 100% accurate? Absolutely not. Not even close to bolting it together and actually truing it on a truing stand. But it got pretty close. Now, I did read some comments and converse back and forth with a viewer that claimed to actually be at Harley-Davidson when they started doing this, and he was actually in the engineering department. And he said part of the press fit failures originally were that as part of another cost-saving measure, 
Harley Davidson really didn't change out their hydraulic fluid that they were using to press these with. And over time, it got dirty, and this was just a big cost-saving measure by not changing it as regularly as they should. And they learned part of their issue was where they were getting way off the press fit tolerance where they wanted to be was actually dirty hydraulic fluid. Because when they do press these, you do get a little bit of that residual fluid left on that shaft. Now, according to the viewer, after they got that little situation squared away and they started changing that fluid out on a more regular basis, the issue with the cranks basically kind of coming out of alignment, this kind of went kind of the wayside. Now, honestly, do I believe all of that? I do to a degree, but what the problem is where I have a problem really buying into that is we've still seen a lot of scissoring failures out where the flywheels have actually shifted on the crank pin. Does that happen to every engine? Absolutely not. Pressing the cranks isn't a bad thing, it's not a great thing, but it does work to some degree. And the reason why I say it works to some degree is on the newer engines, Harley-Davidson is pretty confident with these press cranks of putting 120 horsepower, 120 torque into them through their Screaming Eagle kits. Do I like that? Not necessarily, but it, going and putting a brand new crank in the bike, that adds a significant cost to a build. So are the press cranks absolutely terrible? I don't think they're great, but I don't think they're a complete and utter disaster. They do actually work pretty good, as long as you don't do, go too crazy with it. If you're looking at building a monster motor, you're probably better off going out and having an aftermarket crank set up, done, or just go buy a different crank. Now, in the terms of quality and reliability, when it comes to the newer Harley-Davidson engines, a big thing that always comes up is the Screaming Eagle catalog. Now, Harley-Davidson offers much larger roller bearings, much better roller bearings, if you were to go with their Stage 4 kit. Now the question comes up is, why don't they just put those better bearings into the engine to begin with instead of ha basically having to sell you one if you decide to hop up your engine? Well, for one, on a stock Harley-Davidson engine, as it is, even on a twin cam or a Milwaukee 8, when those bikes are stock and come out of the factory and then they roll off the showroom floor for the power that is in that engine or maybe even putting a cam in it, those lower roller bearings are more than enough. Guys, the bottom line is, the late model Harley-Davidsons, they will never be what they used to be. It, they literally were not built like they used to, which in some ways, it's not a bad thing. In some ways, it's, it's actually pretty good. But the thing is, is that I don't want you to be afraid to modify your motorcycle and feel like it's just going to become a ticking time bomb. It's not. They're actually pretty good. They're pretty solid for what they are. Is it the way it used to be? Absolutely not. But things change all the time. If you've got the time and the money to tear it down and go through and convert everything back over, I would absolutely do it. But if you're just looking at a set of cams, you want to put a nice cam plate in there, maybe do a little head work, you know, maybe even a big bore kit. Just keep your power mild, ride it sensibly, and you're not going to really run into any issues. Guys, I really want to thank you for sticking with me. I had another big move. Uh, the past seven, eight months have been pretty, a lot of life changes have happened. I'll, I'll go that far. I know I don't try to get it too personal on the channel, but I had two major moves come up and I've been shifting around a little bit. There's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes, but I really want to thank you all for sticking with me and working with me through all these changes. I really, really do appreciate it. Well, I get everything cleaned up in front of me a little bit. Uh, I'll turn the camera around and I'll kind of show you guys the new shop setup. It is a much, much needed upgrade and a big departure from where I started out in the little single car garage. And then I was uh, had to make a move and was living with some family and they were gracious enough to let me set up in their garage and put up with me trying to film and do videos. So very thankful and big shout out to them. Really appreciate it, but you guys, you guys make this happen. Um, this has been a dream of mine. I finally achieved it. Uh, I hate the circumstances that it came with, but uh, hey, we're here. And as I mentioned, I'll get this what's in front of me cleaned up because it's uh, it's pretty pretty rough right now because <laughs> I just moved in. So, but other than that, we're doing good. We're gonna get set up. I got some new content coming. So stick in there, guys, and I really appreciate you watching and supporting the channel. Well, with that, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. You guys stay safe, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.